Hi, I'm Professor Cecil Bohan at Ball State University, Muncie, Indiana. I teach principles of microeconomics and I'd like to share an assignment I do with my students. Here at Ball State University, we have the David Owsley Museum of Art. I spend a day with my students here at the Art Museum. Before they come to the Art Museum, I want them to form groups, and then when they come to the Art Museum, find a work of art, use it to illustrate an economic concept, and then write a 17-syllable haiku that illustrates the economic concept and also refers to the work of art. The students then share their work with the rest of the class with PowerPoints. Each PowerPoint should have three pages on it. The first page should tell us something about the work of art, its background. Second page should present the work of art and also show the haiku. The third page is meant to give an explanation of how the haiku and the work of art work together to illustrate the economic concept. Now, this all counts for 10% of the grade for each one of the students, and it's graded based upon its economic accuracy and also its artistic creativity. Um, let's look at some of them. Here's a typical project. The first PowerPoint slide tells us a little bit about the picture, Valley at the Foot of Mount Snowden. It's by Alfred Vickers. It's Romantic Era, 19th Century, 1865 oil painting. If you look at the picture, you see a uh, big sky, cows going out of the picture. Here's what my students did. Cow supply goes up. Price then begins to free fall. Hamburgers for all. Now here's their explanation. It's a bit hackney, but after much looking around the art museum, we spotted to write a haiku based on this oil painting by Alfred Vickers. The picture is of cows in an open field, eating grass and overall happy. These conditions led us to believe that cow supply will increase, therefore the price of hamburgers will decrease and the availability of hamburgers will increase. Well, the explanation's not as great as all that, but you know they get the point. An increase in supply generates a decline in price. Here's an example of a truly outstanding project. The artist is Arthur Blanche, an American, another farm, it's a lithograph from 1934. Now if you look at the picture, you see sort of a decrepit barn and mm, farm that's sort of fallen on hard times. Here's the student's haiku. Harvest quick to change, no profit from subsidy, elastic supply. What, you might say? until you remember the principles of incidence with subsidies and taxes. Here's their explanation. We're assuming that this agricultural market can change its output quickly, produce more or less, additional farms enter and leave the market. This farmer has fallen on tough times and hopes that a subsidy will be able to increase profits enough to save the farm. Unfortunately, since the market supply is quite elastic, the consumer gains the majority of the subsidy benefits, while the producer gets relatively little. This haiku illustrates the misconception that 100% of the subsidy goes to the intended recipients. I think this is very sophisticated thinking for economic students at a principal's level and a good application of using art to illustrate an economic concept. Here's another example of outstanding student work. The artist, William Morris Hunt, in 1878, painted the picture of the Rapids, Sister Island, Niagara. And yes, it's about a Rapids near Niagara Falls. Note that it's a small falls, and before there's the river, and here's the student's haiku. Steady to rapid, elasticity sinks down as time decreases. As seen in the painting, the river is steady and flat for a while in the long stretch of time, but later goes into a rapid fall in a very short period of time. Just like the river, the more time you have to adjust to changes in prices, the more elastic the demand curve will be, steady, flat part of the river. And the less time you have, the less elastic the demand curve will be, short, steep, fall part of the river. The graph of the demand curve goes from flat to steep as the amount of time decreases, like Hunt's painting of the rapids. 
What a great explanation and use of imagery to illustrate the principles of time and elasticity. So why do this? Why bring students to an art museum for a class? Well, I hope it ends up promoting retention of economic ideas. You know, there's a lot of evidence in the educational psychology literature that if an individual learner links an idea with a concept, they retain it longer and they retain it at a deeper level. Second, I hope this also bridges the divide between what Deidre McCloskey has called the poet and the positivist, between arts and sciences, and shows that economics really is an all-encompassing discipline. Finally, it's just a lot of fun to spend a day in the museum with economics students. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions on how to use this, please get in touch with me at cbohannon at bsu.edu. Thank you very much.